Yeah, yeah. Hello, guys. Um, today we're going to do the Mozilla Rene. In the last lesson, if you didn't check it out, the link is up there. So without wasting time, we are going to discuss the Mozilla Rene in short. The video is going to be very short. Because um, I, I said I was going to do the literal fees and the parochial region, but I understand it is going to be more complicated and it will be difficult for you to understand everything because the lateral phase and the parotid region are complicated, complicated. So what I'm trying to do by doing the, the mandibular nerve and the maxillar nerve, and I'm going to do the maxillary artery. And from there, I'm going to do the parotid region itself. Right? So by so doing, it will be easier for you to link all these parts and it will be easier for you then to understand the lateral phase and the parotid region. Because remember, the aim is not to complicate things. right? So with that being said, at the end of this video, what you should understand, you should be understanding the cause or before you should be understanding the origin of the maxillary nerve, you should be understanding its cause and you should be understanding its branches. Because remember the aim is not to cram, guys. The aim is not to cram. Cramming is just failing yourself, right? Because when you cram, it will only last for I don't know, for a certain period of time, then you forget every single thing. So it's just wasting your time because you'll be studying one thing over and over again. So the aim is not to cram, but to understand. And the only way to understand is this if you do exactly what I'm doing. Keep things simple, don't overcomplicate things, right? So I hope you understood um, the video on the mandibular nerve and everything. And then, yeah, again, let me know what you think of these videos on the comment below and tell me which section you didn't understand and I'll try to make a specific video in that section to explain that. So without wasting time guys, what you have to know and is what I explained in the previous videos, the maxillary nerve is a division of the trigeminal nerve, right? So the trigeminal nerve which is your cranial nerve number five gives three Division, so ophthalmic, your maxilla, which is the second one, and then the third, which is the mandibular, which we did, right? So, I'm, today I'm not going to to be explaining. So today I'm not to be explaining. I'm not going to explain the origin from the brainstem because I did that on the previous video. So what you have to understand is that the originate from the brainstem and the trigeminal nerve has four nuclei. Right, it is one motor and then three nuclei, and then I mean them to say it's the mesencephalic, the principal sensory, and then and the spinal, right, and the spin, spinal and sensory, and understand each that the other, another one is to do with touch, another one with pain and temperature, and the other one with um, proprioception, and know which which ones are those, right? So today I'm not going to start from there, and then from there we said they will form. The sensory root will form the trigeminal ganglion. So if I was to draw the trigeminal ganglion, it would be something of that nature, right? Something like that, right? That would be the trigeminal ganglion, right after they're from the brainstem. So you find, where do we find the trigeminal ganglion? We find it in the middle cranial fossa. You find it in the middle cranial fossa, just lateral to the cavernous sinus, right? If you want me to be specific with that, let me know in the comment below and then I'll do a separate video on that. But that is mostly on the neuroanatomy part, right? So that is our trigeminal ganglion. So our trigeminal ganglion will give us how it will give us peripheral um, branches, which is your V1, your V2, and your V3. So today we are mainly on V2 because V2 is your maxillary nerve. And you must remember that your maxillary nerve is purely sensor. It's purely sensor. Right? So since it is purely sensory, it means that the motor nuclei doesn't have anything. It doesn't have to be part of this maxillary nerve, right? So meaning that 
the important nuclei here are the three sensory nuclei that I just mentioned, right? So without wasting time, your this is your V2, which is your maxillary nerve. It will go from there, then it will form before it can even exit, before it can even exit the cranial cavity, it will form a branch there, which is called the medial meningeal branch, right? The medial meningeal branch. The medial meningeal branch or the medial meningeal nerve. It's the medial meningeal nerve. And then other textbooks will say it's just the meningeal branch. So meningeal branch and medial meningeal nerve, it's one and the same thing. So what it does, it supplies the jura, the jura matter of the medial cranial fossa, just the medial cranial, the jura matter of the medial cranial fossa. I hope that makes sense. And then after doing that, it will exit the skull through foramen rotunda. Yeah? Through foramen rotunda, we will just write R, foramen rotunda. Yeah? Let me just write FR. Remember, when you're taking notes, you shouldn't do this. Write them in full, guys, for you to understand, right? It will be, it will exit through the foramen rotunda. Then after exiting through the foramen rotunda, the maxillary nerve will sort of like, it will curve in a way and then go to the infratemporal fossa. We are going to do the infratemporal fossa on its separate uh, video, right? Because it, it's form of the lateral, it's part of the lateral piece. So hence I'm saying the lateral piece is complicated. So it will it will go a bit laterally, and then it will come back and form the floor of the orbit. Right? I hope you understood that this. So and then here, somewhere here, you have um I don't know how to draw this because I wanted to draw dotted lines. So you you have after exiting the foramen for, um, rotunda, it will go through. It will go through the pterygopalatine fossa. I think it will do. Yeah. So the green, the green dotted area I'm drawing is your pterygopalatine fossa, right? After going through the pterygopalatine fossa, you can see that it it extends to this region here. So let me make this region here, red, the red dotted line. So this red dotted region, yeah, this red dotted region would be your infratemporal fossa. So this is your infratemporal fossa, this is your pterygopalatine fossa, right? Then up there you would have your temporal fossa, but you're not, the, the, it has nothing to do with the maxillary nerve. So it's your pterygopalatine force and your infratemporal force. So we are going to do them specifically and discuss their contents and everything. But what you should know is that the maxillary nerve is part of the contents of the pterygopalatine force, right? And then from there, you will have, it will, the pterygopalatine, okay, let me use this rainbow color. From there, it will enter the infra, infraorbital fissure. It will enter the infraorbital fissure. So I'll, I'll draw the infraorbital fissure then. And then the infraorbital fissure does come into contact with the pterygopalatine fossa. So I'll just join them just like I did. Right? I hope this makes sense. Guys. So this rainbow color is your infraorbital fissure. So we have the pterygopalatine fossa, the infraorbital fossa, and then infraorbital fissure. So the infraorbital fissure goes into the orbit. If we can check the skull of which I didn't put the image, but if this was if this was our orbit, the infraorbital fissure would be somewhere there. Then you'd have your superior orbital fissure somewhere there. And then just below it you'll have your optic canal. But we are not there today. But if you understand the skull it will be easier for you to follow what I'm doing, right? So it is as easy as that. Guys. And then what it will do, the, let me use this red color. 
the maxillary nerve will have ganglionic branches, right? It will have two ganglionic branches that will form the ganglion. What is the name of that ganglion? Remember what is a ganglion, guys? A ganglion is what? It's the nerve or the cell bodies of a nerve combined. When we combine the cell bodies of a nerve outside the central nervous system, we get what we call a ganglion. So this ganglion, the name of this ganglion here, since it is in the perigo, the pterygopalatine force, it will be called the pterygopalatine ganglion. It is abbreviated as PPT, right? So we will have our pterygopalatine ganglion. Other textbooks call it the sphenopalatine ganglion. And the reason for that is that it is closer to the sphenopalatine foramen, right? But I prefer the pterygopalatine ganglion, right? So this is our pterygopalatine ganglion and our pterygopalatine ganglion will give us a couple of branches that are important. The first branch that it will give us, it will give us the pharyngeal nerve, right? I'll just write PN. It will give us the pharyngeal nerve. It will give us the nasopalatine nerve, right? The nasopalatine nerve. And then, this pharyngeal nerve, obviously pharyngeal, you think of pharynx, so it will go to innervate the pharynx. This nasopalatine, it will exit through the incisive fossa. Remember, your incisive fossa is just there, right? Your incisive fossa, and then what it will do from there, you take the word, the name, the name of the nerve itself, it's nasopalatine. So naso, it will supply or innervate the nasal septum. And then the palatine, to be specific, it will innervate the hard palate because we, we have the soft and the hard palate, but it will innervate the hard palate. But to be specific, the anterior part of it, just the anterior part of the nasal of the hard palate, right? And then from there, it will give us the another branch which will go through the palatine canal. So it will go through the palatine canal and give us, after going through the, the palatine canal, it will exit the palatine canal in two foramen. There are two foramen. The other one is the greater palatine foramen, right? This one is greater palatine foramen. And then obviously, if an anatomy is simple, guys, if there's something, if the superior something, they always have to be inferior something. If there's something that is greater at all, they always have to be something that is lesser at all. So it's the opposite of what you're given. So if they said we have the greater palatine foramen, it means we, we should have the lesser palatine foramen, which would be this one here. So what will exit? This, this nerve will divide into two, right? Into two you will have the one exiting through the greater palatine foramen will be the greater palatine nerve. The one exiting through the lesser palatine foramen will be the lesser palatine nerve. And we have two lesser palatine nerves, right? So the greater palatine nerve will innervate the hard palate, just like this one. But this one, to be specific, it's just the anterior part, not the whole of the and of the hard palate. So the greater palatine, which is this GP here, the greater palatine will innervate the hard palate. And then the lesser palatine will innervate the soft palate. I told you, if we have hard palate, we should have soft palate. So this one will innervate the hard palate. The lesser palatine will innervate the soft palate. And in, in on top of that, it will also innervate the palatine tonsils, right? So this is easy, easy, guys. And then from there, what we will have after it enters the, remember this rainbow um, rounded region I drew here, I said it's your infraorbital, the infraorbital fissure, right? So after it enters the infraorbital fissure, it will be called the infraorbital nerve, right? 
So it will divide, it will branch into two. This branch here, this top branch here, is your zygomatic branch. It's our zygomatic branch. I'll just write zygo. It's our zygomatic nerve. Ne? So you have your zygomatic nerve, which will branch into two. It will branch into two. What are those two branches? The first and the top one is the zygomatic temporal. So I'll just write ZT. And we spoke about the zygomatic, zygomatic temporal um, when discussing the skull and the anterior face. So if you didn't check that um, lesson, please check it. I'll put the link on the on the description below, right? And yeah, just check it, guys. And then it will also divide into the zygomatic fascia. So the zygomatic nerve will divide into the zygomatic temporal and the zygomatic facial nerve. The zygomatic temporal will innervate the skin of the temporal bone, right? Or the temporal region. And the zygomatic facial will innervate the skin of the face that just somewhere there because they, they both go, they, they are not that far from each other. They both go through the zygomatic bone, right? Awesome, I hope you understand. And then from there, this branch, this branch here is called our infraorbital nerve. Infraorbital nerve. Then our infraorbital nerve will pass the groove in the orbit, right? It will pass the groove. So it will pass a groove in that region. That is a groove of it. Right. So after passing the groove, it will enter the canal. And since this is the infraorbital nerve, we will call this groove what? The infraorbital groove. And then it will enter a canal. The name of that canal will be infraorbital canal. Simple. Don't overcomplicate things. This is your infraorbital canal, I'll just write canal there. And then after that, it will exit the, the orbit by or through the, it will exit it through a foramina called the infraorbital foramen. So just because we have the infraorbital nerve running through it, everything it meets or everything it passes through, we call it with the name of the nerve that passes there. So it passes a groove, that groove will be called infraorbital groove. Enters a canal, that canal will be called infraorbital canal, and then it exits the orbit through another foramen, which will be called what? The infraorbital foramen. So guys, whoever said anatomy is difficult, is crazy. So this thing is simple. Then after exiting the infraorbital foramen, it will form or three branches. So what are the names of those three branches? The first one, it will supply the lower eyelid. So it will supply the lower eyelid because the upper eyelid is supplied by what? By the branch of the ophthalmic division, right? I'm going to do a separate video on the ophthalmic nerve, right? So it will supply the lower eyelid. What will be the name of that branch? It will be palpebral branch. Remember when we were doing the anterior phase, we said we have the palpebral part when we were doing the orbicularis oculimus. Yeah? So this palpebral, remember, it comes from there. If you, really, you, you, you understood that, it will be easier for you to understand this palpebral part I'm talking about. So every time they mention palpebral, just think of the eye. So it will have the palpebral part, and then the second part it will have, it is the nasal, right? So your nasal will supply what? The skin all, or the skin over the, the, the nose, because it's nasal, right? So you have your nasal, and then the last one will be your labia. So the last one will be your labial branch. 
But to be specific, the superior, it is, called, it is often called the superior labia. Why superior? Because it only supplies the upper lip. So hence it's called superior, right? So we have three branches, the palpebral supplying the lower eyelid, the nasal supplying the, the skin of the, of the nose and then the labial supplying the upper lip. And then from there, we are not done. Just before it can even, before it can branch, right? It will form um, another branch. The maxillary nerve will give off another branch, which is all of these three branches. You'll have one branch there and then have another branch that will, will branch off at the groove, when it's at the groove, right? And then you'll have another one when it's at the canal, right? Let me try to use um, this green color to make it easy. So you have one branch just before it can branch into zygomatic. Then you have another branch before it can leave the groove, right? And then you have the last branch at the canal. So all of these are your superior alveoli. Remember we did the if we have superior alveolar, obviously we should have inferior alveolar. But the inferior alveolar, we only find it in the mandibular nerve. It is the branch of the mandibular nerve. Again, if you didn't check it, please check that lesson, right? Because you, you'll end up being confused. With what am I talking about? So these branches, these green branches are through here. They are all your superior alveolar branch. Superior alveolar branches. So this. This one here would be your posterior, al posterior superior alveolar. Ne? Posterior, why posterior? Because it is posterior, posterior to all of these branches I drew. So it is your posterior superior alveolar, right? I'll just write A It is our posterior superior alveolar branch. And then we have our middle superior alveolar, right? And then we have our anterior superior alveolar. Anatomy is self-explanatory because you don't need to cram this things. This one is called anterior because it is anterior to all of these. This one middle because it is in the middle of these two. And then you just have to know that all of these, once you know that all of these represent the superior alveolar, it will be easier for you then not to cram the whole of this, right? Because you can't cram the whole of anatomy, it's a lot. You can't, you just can't. So the posterior superior alveolar will supply what? The molar teeth. It will supply the molar teeth. And your, your middle superior alveolar will supply your premolar. The beauty of anatomy is so this one will supply the premolar. And then if if you can check, all of them they are just supplying the teeth. If this is supplying the premolar, this is supplying the mole. Which teeth are left? You are left with your incisors and your canines. So those ones will be supplied by the anterior superior alveolar. Simple, simple, don't overcomplicate things. So this one will supply the in, incisor and the what? And the canine, right? Don't say it's one plus C, it's I. This is your incisor and your canine, right? Some just books will say, obviously they're the anterior teeth. So they won't ask you, but just so you know, you still remember the formula, the dental formula, right? You still remember the dental formula, two is to one is to two is to three. So two of incisive one, if we start from the middle, two is to one is to two is to three, right? But that is not important for now. Just know that the posterior superior alveolar, and what you have to know to, to know is that all of these all of this molar, premolar, and whatever the teeth that I just named, those are your 
upper teeth, upper teeth. Those are your maxillary teeth, right? So meaning that it, they don't supply the, the mandibular teeth because remember that your teeth are there and you have your temporal mandibular joint of which we are going to do when we're doing the lateral piece and then you have your mandibular teeth. So they only supply this top one, see, the upper teeth, not the mandibular teeth, right? Awesome. So with that being said, guys, that is as easy as it is, right? It's easy. I, I, I hope I didn't forget anything. So um, there's, I'm pretty sure you're, you're, you're thinking to yourself, like I have a lot of mnemonics to grain, not a lot, a lot of branches and everything. But as always, I promised you to make anatomy easy for you to understand. So since I promised to make anatomy easy to understand, I also came with a mnemonic, ne? a mnemonic that will help you to cram, not to cram, to master and grab and be able to remember most of the branches because it, the maxillary nerve has, I think, 11 or more branches. So it's difficult for you to master that and master the branches of the mandibula and because everything in anatomy has branches. So for you to be able to remember everything, you have to make it easy for you. So the mnemonic I have for you guys is what? My ZP Zebra Zoo is a majestic princess, naturally conscious lady. Ne? So from that, you'll be able to remember every single thing here. So I'll just type it for you here. My, my ZP. So remember guys that anatomy, it's very easy and for you to be able to grasp everything you have to make it easier for you for yourself and find ways to remember it easily because there's no way you'll be able to master every single thing especially if you don't study right and you know that you cannot only study the whole test book right so this is the mnemonic I'm going to give you guys, surely it will jog your memory. Okay? It will jog your memory and it will be easier for you to remember the branches. So I'm going to tell you why this, why this mnemonic and how it works and how to remember it and everything. Right? The meaning of each and every single way. So, as as you know, as you know that um, when it comes to mnemonics, we only use the first letter of each word. So, my ZP zebra zoo is a majestic princess, naturally gorgeous lady. So, we are only going to use the M, the Z that Z and the Z here, I, A, M, and P for princess, naturally, gorgeous lady, right? So that's about 11, if I'm not mistaken. So what is this M for? We start here. The first branch was what? The meningeal branch. So this M is for meningeal. Or remember, if you don't say meningeal branch, you can always say middle meningeal nerve. If you say meningeal, you just have to say meningeal branch. The moment you decide to add middle, you have to add it, right? So this is, this is your middle menin meningeal nerve. Then the second branch was what? The zygomatic branch or zygomatic nerve, which is this one, right? And then it divided into two, zygomatic temporal, which is that, and then this zoo is for zygomatic, zygomatic fascia. And then another branch was the infraorbital, which is this one. 
and then you had your alveolar ne? you have your alveolar but to be specific the anterior this is this a is for the anterior superior alveolar this m is for the middle superior alveolar this p is for the posterior superior alveolar right so the whole of these branches oh jesus the whole of those branches are for your, the superior alveolar anterior middle and the posterior and then from there this n is for your nasal palatine which is this one here. and then this g is for your the the gorgeous lady it's for your this is for greater palatine this is for lesser palatine right these two greater palatine and lesser palatine so with this mnemonic you'll be able to remember everything and with this drawing you'll be able to know because knowing the branches without knowing where they branch and how to move and everything it's useless right so without wasting time i'll just wipe out everything and just pull up this picture here to summarize every single thing that we just did now right so that you grasp everything and you see that in reality this is how things are right so with that being said let's do this picture because i said i want to keep the video very very short I couldn't find a, a picture that was unlabeled, right? Because I hate these pictures that are labeled already. So this is your trigeminal ganglion, as I told you. And then we are only focused on the second division of the trigeminal nerve, which is the maxillary. And then I said the first branch is your medial meningeal nerve or your meningeal branch, right? And then it will exit through the foramen rotundum and then it will branch into two. This is your zygomatic nerve branching into two, your zygomatico temporal and your zygomatico facial. The skin of the temple just around the face, right? around this region. And then from there, you'll have your ganglionic branches forming the pterygopalatine ganglion. The pterygopalatine ganglion will have the pharyngeal nerve going to the pharynx. We will have the nasal nerve. I didn't mention the nasal nerve. Um, and then we will have the, the nasopalatine, right? So the nasopalatine and the nasal branch will exit through the sphenopalatine foramen. That is sphenopalatine foramen. And then from there, you will have your palatine canal. Then from the palatine canal, you will have your greater. But remember that there you have what? Your greater palatine foramen, and then you have your lesser palatine foramen. You have your greater palatine nerve supplying the heart palate. This is the heart palate here. And then you will have your, your lesser palatine. I said we have two of them, as you can see. We have two. They will go to the soft palate and they will also supply what the palatine tonsils also then from there we have our posterior alveolar our middle superior alveolar and anterior superior alveolar the anterior one i said is going to the incisors and the canine the middle one premolar the posterior one is the molar and then from there you have your infraorbital then i said at that somewhere there here let me use a different color there it's your groove right where it branches into being the middle and then somewhere there it's your infraorbital canal so the whole of this actually the whole of this 
is the infraorbital canal. But this is the groove of it. It's here anteriorly the, the branches to be the anterior superior alveoli. Then when it exits the infraorbital foramen, it will have three branches, as I told you. The superior one is the palpebral going to the lower eyelid. This one is the nasal going to the skin of the nose. And the bottom one is the superior labial branch. So with that being said, you would have covered the whole of this. And then, then your nasopalatine nervous, I told you, it will exit through the incisive fossa. We have our incisive fossa there. And it will supply what? The anterior part, I told you, just the anterior part, because you can see it's the, the anterior part of the heart palate, right? And then it will also supply the nasal septum and the anterior palatine, as I told you. So from this, we, those are all the branches of the maxillary nerve. And I hope I made it easier for you and you now understand. And besides cranium, you will understand the branches and their, the, the areas they innervate and everything. So yeah, guys, like and subscribe and let me know what you think of today's lesson. And yeah, that will be it for today. Out. Okay.